you find this relaxing? Oh, yeah. It's away from the sort of the meanness that you see in, in Washington. You get here with just the regular folks, and it's so pleasant. A big part of the story of Justice Clarence Thomas told by his supporters that this is a guy who's gone from growing up in deep poverty in the segregated South to the heights of American power without losing sight of who he is. And one example used to show what a humble and down-to-earth guy he is is that instead of traveling to exotic locales on vacation, he spends his vacations driving an RV, parking in Walmart lots and talking to average Americans. Except that we've learned he does go on insanely expensive vacations with his benefactor, Harlan Crow, including trips on Crow's yacht, his jet, and to his exclusive Adirondacks resort. And then we also learned from reporting by the New York Times that this man of the people drives a top-of-the-line luxury motorhome that he bought with a loan for the entire purchase price of over a quarter million dollars from another wealthy friend, not Crow. NBC News has not independently confirmed that report. A Senate review then found that this loan for over a quarter of a million dollars was mostly forgiven. Senators have also requested more information from Harlan Crow and other benefactors as Supreme Court justices, but after getting only limited cooperation, they now plan to issue subpoenas. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island is a member of the Judiciary Committee and one of the people leading the push for those subpoenas, and he joins me now. It's good to have you on, Senator. Let's start on the RV home. Obviously, uh, you know, Supreme Court justices are people. They, they buy property. They buy houses. They get mortgages. They get loans for stuff. Fine. But a forgiven loan sounds a lot like a gift to me. Maybe I'm crazy. Like, what's the, what are, what's the judicial ethics code say about loans and forgiven loans in, in an amount of that size? Uh, you are not crazy, Chris. A forgiven loan, in this case, it looks like the entire principle of the loan uh, was forgiven. It looks like he only paid interest over a number of years, and then the entire $267,000 principle was simply forgiven. Uh, that amounts to a gift, not only for uh, judicial disclosure purposes, but also for federal tax purposes. Um, and that's one of the reasons that the Finance Committee of the Senate, led by Chairman Ron Wyden, was able to dig in and find this information. Let's say you were a federal cir circuit court judge. You know, you're on the Ninth Circuit, and you also like to uh, drive a top-of-the-line RV motorhome so that you could talk to, quote, average folks. Um, and, and then that was subsequently forgiven. What, what, would you have to report that? Would that be allowed? Yes. Like what, yeah. Yes, you would have to report that. And you'd have to report who gave it to you in case a case emerged with that individual so that you could make the appropriate recusal decision in addition to the appropriate uh, disclosure. And if you failed to report it, as Justice Thomas failed to report it, you would then be subject to disciplinary proceedings in that circuit and you'd have to uh, account for yourself uh, to your colleagues. So and we're, we know for a fact he did not report this loan forgiveness. We know, I just want to be clear, we know for a fact the loan was forgiven, and we know for a fact he did not report the loan being forgiven. Is that what you're saying? The evidence that we have obtained in the Senate Finance Committee is that the uh, principle of the right. loan was yes. forgiven. We haven't finally pinned that down, but that's what all of the evidence is, and uh, they haven't come forward to rebut that. And uh, then, of course, there's no reporting of that as a effective gift that should have been uh, reported. We've heard news that there's plans now to issue subpoenas, uh, and I think those would be coming out of judiciary, not finance, which is the Ryan Wyden's committee, but rather judiciary, where uh, also where you where you sit, and, and which is chaired by Dick Durbin, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for yes. Leonard Leo, who runs the. I don't even know what he runs anymore. He runs a, a, a million different organizations with a million different names, all nested within each other in an impenetrable uh, maze. Uh, so it, uh, Leonard Leo, Harlan Crow, the, the, the billionaire friend and benefactor, Clarence Thomas, maybe a, a few others. What, what pushed Senate Democrats or committee leadership over into subpoena territory? Well, we were getting uh, non-cooperation um, from the various individuals that we requested. And we were getting non-cooperation that seemed utterly incredible. 
Uh, their theory was that we have absolutely no business conducting any inquiries here, which overlooks the fact that the disclosure statute that's at issue is a statute passed by Congress. And the recusal statute that would be triggered by big gifts like this is another statute passed by Congress. And the body that implements those two rules is the Judicial Conference, which is an agency created by Congress. So their argument is, you, Congress, don't get any oversight over how an agency you, Congress, created is implementing laws that you, Congress, passed. Just from me saying it, you can see that the argument is nonsense. And the fact that they were just sticking to it tells me, A, that there's really something to hide there, and B, that we're just going to have to push forward with proper compulsory process. Uh, that is, I, I guess, the, 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 the wording I've seen is may face or planning to issue subpoenas. Can you nail that down any further? Or is that, uh, do I have to talk to Dick Durbin for that? Like, what, what, how, how final is this? What, hap what, ha what happened is that on, on Monday we gave out the formal notice that a subpoena resolution is going to be on the agenda Thursday. Gotcha. And customarily gotcha. that's kicked over a week, so it will be actually next Thursday, and what the resolution does is it authorizes the chairman to issue the subpoena, and after that, the chairman can issue at his pleasure and at his convenience and at the time of his own selection. So exactly when we then proceed to the issuance is not determined yet, but the vote should be 10 days from now. All right, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island. Thank you very much, sir.